Hi everyone, welcome back to Grounded Haven. Today I am out in the garden and I am going to be harvesting some of the things that are ready right now. I have a ton more greens to pick. I also have some radishes and cilantro. It's been pretty rainy around here lately. The last two days it has rained almost nonstop for two days straight. So today we have a beautiful sunny day and everything's looking really lush and green because of all that rain. In just two days we had an inch and a half of rain. And while we're here by the strawberry bed, I saw that we had this very first strawberry ripe, but it looks like a slug or something has eaten it. So, oh, that sucks. I also see another one here that also looks like a slug or some kind of bug got to it. So that's really annoying. The slugs this year have been so bad. Um, but I'll just pick these and give them to the chickens because they'll like them. In our strawberry bed, we have lots more strawberries starting to ripen here. So hopefully we'll get at least some of them. We'll have to see a little bit later on, I guess. Hey ladies, special treat. You want some strawberries? Here's a look at the garden and how green everything is looking. All of our trees have filled in and are looking so beautiful. It's so nice to have things alive again. Um, so we're gonna start in this bed over here, which has our peppers planted in here now. I didn't show that in a video because we just wanted to get it done. But if you remember back in, I think March, I had sown some radishes and carrots down the middle of this bed. I knew that I was gonna have the peppers on the edges here, but the radishes and carrots were just gonna grow in the middle and pretty much be harvested before the peppers got really big. The carrots are looking really nice. We got really good germination on these and I've already come through and thinned them out a few times Times, which I still probably have to thin them out a little bit more you can see that there's a bunch of carrots growing pretty crowded in here so I just have to thin them out so that they have like a few inches of space in between and then for my radishes a lot of them actually did die because we had a pretty hard frost after they had come up but some of them did survive and I think they're ready to pick now so I did half the bed with white radishes and half with a red variety. I don't remember which kind, but all the red ones died anyway. And what's left are these white radishes, which I haven't picked any yet. So here we go. That is a nice, beautiful radish. It kind of looks like those Japanese white turnips. It has a little bit of a crack, probably because we've had so much rain. Um, but let's see how some of these other ones are doing. I just have one left here and I think I'll just leave it. It looks pretty small still. Um, by the way, as I'm going throughout the garden today, you'll probably see a lot of these little containers. We put out these beer traps for slugs. So you can see this one already got a couple of slugs yesterday. That's just one of the ways we're trying to get rid of them. But not bad already. Four radishes to start with and I have a ton more in the back that I'm going to be harvesting. So I'll set these aside and then we'll add them all up later on. So next let's move on to this bed that has a bunch of kind of like young babyish kale. In my last harvest video, I did already pick some of this and I just took some scissors and like cut it back, but you can see how it has regrown. It's even bigger than last time. And the kale that we harvested last time was so sweet and tender, it was so delicious. So I'm gonna take a nice big harvest off of this again today.
So in another bed, I have some lettuce and kale, and I'm going to be picking both of these today. I know I just picked baby kale in the other bed, but this is kind of older kale. It's a little bit tougher and more mature. So I think what I'll do with this is I will blanch and freeze this because I love having frozen greens in the freezer. It's great for quiches or throwing into soups. And the other kale that I picked in the other bed, that's just gonna be for fresh eating just because it's so sweet and tender but this tougher stuff will be great for preserving because it'll hold up a little bit nicer. And then for this lettuce, it is looking so good. I have been picking just like the outer leaves of the lettuce, as you can see right here. Some of these leaves have been cut off, but they're starting to create almost heads of romaine right now. And I am going to have to clear this bed out pretty soon because this is my bed for eggplant and peanuts. And I'm just waiting on harvesting all of these things before I put them out. So I think what I'll do today is instead of coming and cutting individual leaves, I'm just gonna cut the whole head off. It's kind of a nice treat to be able to harvest a whole head like this. I love the texture of like those inner crispy leaves in the middle. So that'll be a nice treat and then we'll have some nice salads this week which I think I will show in another video because I have a salad we've been really enjoying lately that I'll show how to make. But yeah, I'll just harvest a few heads of these for us to enjoy for the week. And then soon we will make our way through the rest of these. Um, once you cut them off at the base, they won't grow back like they do if you just cut the outer layers. Um, but since I'm looking to clear out this bed, that's going to be perfectly fine. For the kale that we're harvesting, I usually like to strip the leaves off of the stem while we're outside. That way it saves me a trip from having to bring all of those stems inside and then back out to the compost pile. And this also helps us to be able to fit more of the leaves into our bowl so that we can harvest a whole big bunch of this because those stems really do take up a lot of space. And with the blanching and freezing that I'm going to be doing with this kale, the volume of it does reduce a lot once it hits that hot water. So in order to make that that process worth it, I really have to pick a whole big bowl of this. So that's why we're going ahead and doing that right now. In this bed right behind the lettuce and kale bed, our cilantro is looking beautiful. It is at the perfect time for me to harvest a whole bunch of this. And this is a lot of cilantro to eat. This is not just for the week though. I am going to be freezing this so that I can preserve it for salsa making season because we can't really grow cilantro in summer. It just bolts immediately. So if I just harvest a whole bunch of this and freeze it in ice cube trays, then I will have them available for in the summer when our tomatoes are ready and I am canning salsa for the year. So I'm gonna be harvesting pretty much all of this. I'll cut it the same way I did with the baby kale that time, maybe at about here. And then I may be able to get like one more harvest off of the baby leaves that are growing underneath. But yeah, it's looking really good. Um, and I will show you how I am freezing these. It's really simple, it's just in ice cubes, but I'll show it at the end of this video just so that you can see.
in the back of our garden now. This is our broccoli row. They're looking really nice. This one is probably the biggest one really good and then on either side of these broccoli plants i did two rows of radishes so again i have two varieties this one looks like it is a french breakfast variety which are the longer ones so here's one that is a perfect looking radish right there and then on the other side we have more of those white radishes that i picked back in one of the raised beds so we're just going to go through and pick what looks like is ready so that also looks really perfect. I haven't tried these white radishes yet, so I'm not sure what the flavor's like. I don't know if we're gonna eat them raw. If they taste more like turnips, then I will probably roast these. I think they'll be really good like that. So here are the two different varieties next to each other. They're both really beautiful. And once we wash them off later, they're gonna look even better. That really helps the colors to shine through, especially on the pink ones. So let's get picking. After we picked and washed everything up, I went ahead and got the cilantro and also that kale preserved. For the cilantro, I'm just taking a nice big bunch of it and rolling it up really tightly and then I'm just going to finely chop this by hand. Then I'm going to put it into an ice cube tray. I have the silicone one that makes it really easy to pop them out later, but you can just use whatever ice cube tray you have. And I'm not trying to go for any specific measurements. I'm just gonna try and fill each of these ice cube trays up evenly. So I'm gonna have to do this in a few batches, taking a bunch of cilantro and chopping it one bunch at a time. I'm going to be covering these with water, but before I do that, I like to try and pack down the cilantro as much as possible. 
Having these covered when you freeze them will kind of preserve the color a little bit, but I don't want to have too much extra water in here, so by packing it down as much as possible, I'm limiting the amount of space that the water will have to fill in all of those little cracks and crevices. So as I pour this water in, I'm just going to do it very slowly and try to do as little as possible, just barely covering that cilantro. This is so that when I add it to salsa or other recipes later on, I don't want the water to water down my recipe. Some people also like to do this with olive oil, so you can try that if you prefer that over water. And lastly, I'm just going to take a chopstick and kind of push everything that is sticking up out of the water and try to get it submerged. Anything that's sticking up will kind of crumble away from the ice cube. And when it's not in the water, the cilantro can take on a really dark color. And anything that is under the water and will freeze within the ice cube will stay a nice vibrant green. So just to the best of my ability, I'm going to try and push everything down under there. And then we can just stick this in the freezer until it is all frozen. For the kale, I have blanched all of it by putting it in a pot of boiling water for just 10 to 15 seconds. And then I've moved it to a cold ice water bath to give it a good temperature shock and keep that really nice vibrant green color and I'm just going to start taking handfuls of this blanched kale and just squeezing the living daylights out of it trying to get as much of that water out as possible. You don't want to have a lot of water in the kale when you freeze it because this can cause freezer burn and that's really going to alter the flavor and the texture of the kale. So the goal is to just get this as dry as possible so this is the method that I usually use to preserve kale and also other kinds of greens like Swiss chard, beet greens, or collards. Any kind of like really hearty green can go through this blanching and freezing process really well. And it's my favorite way to do this because it really preserves the texture of the greens really well. When I cook with them later on, I find that there's really like no difference between using this frozen kale and fresh kale. I know that some people don't like to go through the blanching process, but I find that if you don't, then your greens kind of just crumble when you use them later on. Whereas with these, they really keep their shape and they still have like a nice crispness or a little bit of chew to them. So I always blanch it. It only takes a few minutes, so I think it's worth the trouble. After giving everything a good squeeze, I am going to give it a rough chop. Nothing too fine. I am okay if this stays in kind of like chunkier pieces, but just giving it a rough chop now makes it a lot easier so I don't have to worry about cutting it up later when it's defrosting because that will be kind of hard to do. And it's pretty quick and easy to do right now, especially after I've squeezed it, you can see how they're kind of in like these little pucks. So I just cut them as if it's like a whole vegetable. And usually these pieces end up being good bite-sized pieces when I go to stick them in recipes later on. After I've given these a nice rough chop, I went ahead and squeezed them one last time. There was still quite a bit of water in there, so I just gave them a good wringing out. And then I'm just going to portion them out into almost like these little pucks. And I'm going to place these on a silicone mat and I'm going to freeze them like this and then place them in Ziploc bags later on. I like to kind of portion it out like this, that way if I just need a little bit for a recipe, I can just pull out one of these pucks as opposed to if I had just stuck my whole mass of kale into one Ziploc bag, then it would be harder to just break off a chunk of that if I just need a little bit. And I know it doesn't look like a lot. Each of these little pucks of kale is pretty small. It probably looks like only like a quarter of a cup. But because I have squeezed so much out of there, they are very compressed and if I just add one of these to some soup or something, it's going to expand and it'll end up being a lot more than it looks like here. So both the cilantro and this kale just went into the freezer for a few hours to set up. And once everything was all frozen, I can just remove them and place them in some Ziploc bags and we'll be able to use these this summer or even this fall and winter. It's kind of funny that we are already thinking about preserving for the fall and winter because I feel like we just 
got out of that and really it's only been like a month or so since we've started eating fresh vegetables from the garden again but we're very quickly getting into that time of year where we're not just able to pick all of our vegetables for the week but we have an excess and we really want to preserve that for the times when we can't grow these things or for the winter time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this harvest video with a little bit of preservation. We are definitely getting into the season of more harvests and we're going to be doing a lot more preserving of that as well. So we'll have plenty more videos like that to come. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and we'll see you again in the next one.